<clears throat> Call this meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees to order. Let the record show that a quorum of members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and that notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with Texas Government Code, Chapter 551. The time is now 6 o'clock. Um, please join me. We're going to stand. Mr. Hubert is going to lead us in the invocation, and then I will announce the color guard that will do the presentation of colors, and Mr. Sanders will lead us in the pledge. Feel free to join me if you, if you wish. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are grateful for this day that we have been, we have been blessed with. We are grateful for the safe arrival of all of our students from a well-deserved spring break for the for the teachers and also the administrators and for the, the students as well. We're grateful for the weather that we've been blessed with over the last uh, couple of days. We ask you to be with us, be with our, be in our hearts and be in our minds and be with us in this meeting as we discuss the, the issues before us. And we will do this with, a, with an open mind and with an attention to detail that I would expect for us to have. We ask these things in the name of our Savior Jesus Christ, amen. <laughs> the uh, Woodlands College Park Marine Corps JORTC Color Guard is presenting tonight. We have Cadet Gunnery Sergeant Clayton Stewart, Cadet Captain Jaden Stanishek, Cadet Second Lieutenant Paul Crucio, Cadet First Lieutenant Ken oh. Bundy, and they are led by Major oh. Cody Stewart and Sergeant Major Chris oh. Combs. Please join me in honoring the flags of our country and our state. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the, the Texas, Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Item 2A through E, I'm going to go ahead and turn over to Dr. Stockton, Special Board Recognition. Great. At this time, I'll invite the principal of the Woodlands High School, Greg Colshin, to the podium to um, introduce our, our special guests and recipients. Dr. Stockton, Mrs. Bush, members of the board, thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight to recognize a very special group of young people. Uh, but before we do that, I want to give you special thanks for the opportunities you provide our students through extracurricular activities, clubs, organizations uh, that creates a, a well-rounded high school experience. Um, obviously, as they go on forward into their collegiate careers and whatever they do after high school, uh, they'll certainly remember the academic classes. But what they will really remember are the opportunities of camaraderie, teamship, and being part of something more than themselves. So thank you very much for those opportunities. Uh, at this time, I'd like to introduce our swimming coach, Jeremy Wade, to come forward and introduce our special recognition. <clears throat> Well, first off, thanks to the board for having us here tonight. This, this recognition is very, very well deserved. Um, these kids put in a lot of time and effort. And it's not just done in one season. Many of these kids have been competing since they were very, very young. Um, a successful season has many moving parts. And so I want to I recognize, first and foremost, the fantastic group of parents that are here in support of their kids tonight. 
Please stand up. You know, they're a big reason why their kids are so successful in everything that they do. And they've been a great asset to me and um, just supporting me and all the things that I brought in my first year at the Woodlands High School. So I thank them. Um, the other part, moving parts, are uh, great administration. Miss Patty, our athletic secretary, is a phenomenal woman. She's done a lot behind the scenes for us. Um, also, just great administration. Um, Mr. Colshin, uh, just second to none. I mean, he's a genuine supporter of all the programs at, at the Woodlands High School. And you don't find a lot of principals that are genuinely excited to go to swim meets, but he is. <laughs> I mean, he really enjoys it, and he is there for us, and the kids en enjoy his presence as well. And he enjoyed that, uh, that bath in the pool that we had at State and jumping in the pool. So thank you to Mr. Colson. Um, our campus coordinators and our athletic director, Mr. Long, all, all awesome parts of this uh, great season that we had. Also, we have some uh, great coaches. You know, this is uh, my first year to have an assistant swim coach. I came from a smaller program, but Coach Tom, she's done an outstanding job this season. And uh, another coach who has brought our diving program a long ways, he's wearing dual hats this year. He's an aquatics director, and he's Conroy SD diving coach, uh, Coach Witt. Uh, this year, we broke five school records, and we set one state record. Uh, the boys and the girls both won district and regional titles, and our girls were state champions, and our boys were state runner-up. Uh, first, I'm going to recognize, <coughs> first on the agenda here, is our boys state champion 200 medley relay team. First, we had on the backstroke leg, senior Alberto Gomez. Doing breaststroke was Keenan Wolf. He's a senior. And doing butterfly, a freshman, Tyler Hewlett. And our anchor, our anchor freestyle leg was Luke Joris, who is a sophomore. Al Alberto broke two school records. He broke his own 200 IM school record. He also broke a 19-year-old 100 backstroke record set back in 1999. That's when I graduated high school, and I saw that guy break the record then. And uh, Alberto's going to swim for Texas A&M. Uh, And next up is our girls back-to-back -back state championship team. Uh, start out with the girls 200 medley relay. They were state champions with a new state record, and that was comprised of Lucy Nordman, She did backstroke. Caitlin Ranera did breaststroke. <laughs> Lily Nordman did butterfly. <laughs> and Valerie Ann Statful did freestyle. And then I'll move on to our girls, 400 free relay, who are also state champions. That was comprised of Lucy Nordman, there, there are five names on this relay because some swam in prelims, some swam in finals, and it was a t very team collaborative effort to get this relay to, to where it was. 
Next was Ainsley Everett. <clears throat> Madeline Cruckton. Sid Roycraft. And Lily Nordman. Uh, also state champion uh, in the 200 freestyle, which that was an event that I wouldn't say it's an off event for her, but she typically liked the 50 and the 100 freestyle, but we thought that was going to be the better chance for us to win a team title. And she, I asked her at the beginning of the season what her individual events, what she would like to swim. She said anything to win it again, and she won the 200 freestyle for us and the 100 backstroke. Oh, nice. Lucy Nordman. And Lucy Norman, she also won the 100 backstroke four <laughs> years in a row. Team effort, and uh, we had lots of individuals that placed in, in their individual events. Um, and before I move on, Lucy is going to swim for Stanford, who just won the NCAA title by like over 200 points. So we had three relays that state our girls' 200 free relay won the bronze, and it was comprised of Valerie Ann Statfield, Vivian Yu, Maxi Cabreras. Caitlin Renera and Ainsley Everett. There was five names there. They also swam two runs and finals. And to go over the, the rest of our individual events, we had Isabella Barriantos, who is a freshman. She swam the 500 freestyle. Um, we had freshman diver Lauren Birch, who was not able to be here tonight, but she placed sixth in diving for us. Again, that's some of that awesome dive coaching by Coach Witt. Uh, Ainsley Everett, Everett was uh, 12th in the 200 IM. Caitlin Ranero was 6th in the 100 breaststroke. Sid was 13th in the 100 backstroke. Uh, freshman Alyssa Sorensen, come on. <laughs> She was eighth in the 100 breaststroke, was huge because she was going into the meet, I think, seated 13th, was it? And so she moved up into the top eight to score some big points for the team. Um, Valerie Ann Statfield swam the 50 free, won the bronze medal in that event. She placed 10th in the 100 freestyle. And then uh, Lily Nordman, she won bronze in both the 200 IM and the 100 fly. One more. Many, many of these kids achieved All-American time standards, but they're not just getting it done in the pool. They get it done in school because they, many of them are going to have academic All-State accolades, academic All-American accolades. And uh, so I'm just very, very proud of the way they conduct themselves both in the water, in school. You're looking at truly some of the finest student athletes in Conroe SD. Let's applaud them. Wait, 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 two on this side, three on that side. It's a relay.
Got all the parents? Rose, just, just a second before you go. Uh, I just want everybody to know what, what you know, the parents know, I know because I had a swimmer and she wasn't as good as any of y'all, okay? <laughs> but, but, but I spent a many a day, uh, and I think y'all are kind of wimping out having an indoor pool facility because I used to have to stand on ice to do that <laughs> at the WAC. But and Lucy remembers that when she was about this tall, okay? But anyway, uh, congratulations. We, nobody understands your commitment, uh, re really understands it except you okay uh every morning every night you know you 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 swim further than most people can run and uh in a day and that's just you know warm up before a meet i couldn't swim it okay so i'm i just want you to know how proud we are for your commitment it shows in all your schoolwork and all your things coaches i want to congratulate you again for an awesome job mr colson as always what 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 an what an honor to you and a tribute to you and in, in, in your school. So, again, on behalf of the board, we congratulate you on your state championship. We congratulate the boys on on a great year, and uh, let's do it again next year. Okay. <laughs>
It was later clarified to be two different instances with two different children, only a few days apart. Um, I received a return call from one of the assistant principals less than an hour after my initial inquiry. During this conversation, I was given scripted responses to my questions that did very little to temper my growing concerns. It was even offered at one point for the offending student to be moved to a different class as to not be with mine, as if my child's life was somehow more important than anyone else's. Later that day, as I was driving home from picking my boys up from school, I received a call from Principal Fuller. He stayed on the phone with me for over half an hour, answering my questions the best he could and speaking with me on a more personal level. For that, I am truly grateful. Unfortunately, this has left me with even greater questions about the continued security of not only my son's school, but every school in this district. The children in question were searched on the days of the event, event and no gun was found. But what happens in the future if they change their mind and decide to act on their threats? Is the staff going to search them every time they walk into school until they graduate, until they are no longer a risk? It, even worse, is the thought of that child that never actually threatens. What about the child we have no advance notice of? I was told about the extra patrols by staff in the hallways and of the armed police officer on campus. All I can say to that is, those exact measures did not sev stop 17 people from being murdered in Parkland, Florida on February 14th. Those exact measures did not stop another three from being seriously injured just this morning at Great Mills High School in Maryland. Since Columbine in 1999, there have been 208 school shootings. Of those 208 school shootings, 50 instances were mass murders, resulting in 141 people being killed. This number does not include mental, physical, and emotional injuries sustained by the children and staff involved in these shootings. 73% 73, 73 of those shooters had no prior criminal record, not even an arrest. We have got to take more serious action. And I beg that this action does not come in the form of more guns being allowed into our schools. Please do not burden our teachers with having to decide whether to personally take the life of one child in order to save the life of another. Airport security did not exist until the first hijacking death in 1970. And even after that one initial murder, an estimated 0.05% of all air travel passengers were subjected to metal detectors and bag searches. It wasn't until 30 years later, when almost 3,000 people were killed in 9-11, that these policies were changed to include every single incoming passenger and continue to grow more stringent with every new threat. How many of our children and teachers have to die before we start to implement more formidable security measures in our schools? I know that as the board for CISD, when the idea of airport-like security is brought up as a solution, your thoughts, as any businessman or woman should, go immediately to the astounding costs that would ensue. My final question for you tonight is how much exactly is my child's life worth, or any of our children for that matter? Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we are um, going to move item 6A up on the agenda <coughs> and do that now, and that is naming them the principal of York Junior High School. Dr. Stockton. As you know, the board, um, the most important thing that we do is hire great people. Um, in our school district. That's how our school district has become great. So it's a pleasure tonight to recommend uh, one of those people to you uh, for the principal position of York Junior High School, and I'd like to recommend Brian Lee. Right. Do I have a motion? Um, I make the motion. I second. All right. <clears throat> Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion passes. Congratulations, Mr. Lee. President Bush, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton, on behalf of myself and my family, we are honored and humbled by the opportunity to serve the Grand Oaks community 
as the principal of York Junior High School. We are excited to continue the outstanding work that has been started by Dr. Povich and are committed to this work and look forward to the opportunity to work with the staff at York <coughs> as well as the other schools within the feeder. A wise man once said that there are no self-made men in this world. I would not be standing before you today to accept this position without the people in my life who have devoted so much time and energy to my development as an educator. To the, extent, uh, to the outstanding group of principals and staffs that I've had the opportunity to serve with, I am forever indebted to you. I would also not be here today without the love and support from my family. Here tonight with me is my wife, Nikki. My daughter, Lainey, son, Camden, and our youngest, who's the loudest, Kinsey. <laughs> my father, Russell Lee. <clears throat> My brother-in-law and sister, Heather and Michael Ramirez, and niece, Ashton Ramirez, and my father-in-law, Glenn Addison. Nice. I wouldn't be here today without their love and unwavering support and dedication to my job, so thank you. My family and I are eager to start this new chapter in our lives, and again, we are grateful for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. A closed session of the board will now be held on matters contained in the notice for this meeting as authorized by Section 551.074 of the Texas Open Meetings Act. Should the board determine that any final action, final decision, or final vote be required with regard to any matter considered in such close or executive meeting or session, then such final action, final decision, or final vote shall be at either a, this public meeting upon the reconvening of this meeting, which is why I think you're all here, or <laughs> B, at the subsequent public meeting of the board upon notice thereof as the board shall determine. A closed session of the board will now be held. It is 628. All right. The board is now in session at 644 p.m., the next item on the agenda is the naming of the lone finalist of the new superintendent of schools. Madam President, I would move that the board select as the lone finalist for superintendent of Conroe ISD, Dr. Curtis Knoll. We gotta have it where it's just, on recording. Just to be official, I second that. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any discussion? Yes, there's quite a bit of discussion. <laughs> there's there's only eight mics and you know, 200 people, but I guess that that's our opportunity. Yeah. Um, I, I would like to start off, if that's okay, mm -hmm. uh, with a few comments. Uh, this was a very diligent effort on the part of the school district. Um, there was a lot of care and effort that was put into this. And one of the things that I personally was looking for um, in a candidate was somebody who, who can continue the continuity that we have, this winning tradition we have here at CISD. And along with that, um, something that I saw is, is somebody that can advocate for both the student and the administrator and the teacher. I was looking out for both of them. And I think uh, Dr. Knoll has a unique ability to communicate that and to let every person know that he's in touch with that they're very, very important and that he has their best interest at heart. And I also think that you can tell the leadership of an individual by how many people are following him and her or her. And I think that's obvious tonight as well. Good job. I guess I'll go next. Um, Stay in order. <laughs> I've been on the board almost eight years and I've gotten to know Curtis Knoll in great detail and uh, I am very pleased that we have made the best selection 
for Conroe ISD for now and for many, many years to come. Um, Dr. Knoll, I'm just going to say this to you, and I'm not going to be any more confidential, uh, but in the interview, you nailed it. <laughs> um, Dr. Knoll, uh, as has already been said, his communication skills are outstanding. Dr. Knoll is so student-centric. He cares more mm. about students of Conroe ISD and is so passionate about them. Uh, it, was, it was great as a board member and as a parent of uh, now graduated Conroe ISD students. It was great to hear how much he cares about your students. So when your kids are at school every day, I know that you're gonna have a superintendent that cares a lot. We already have one that cares a lot. <laughs> and that's going to continue. The other thing that was important to me as a board member in determining a future superintendent was that we continue the great uh, uh, district that Conroe ISD has become because of Dr. Stockton and the work that he's done. And even uh, so, I believe that Dr. Stockton has been a great mentor to Dr. Null, and, and, and that's being seen in uh, what has been done and what will be done in the future. And I'm just very proud to be able to call you our next superintendent of schools. Okay. Well, I had to write mine down. I wasn't that prolific, so. Firstly, Dr. Stockton um, did indeed leave some, some huge shoes to fill, and, and I mean that both figuratively and literally. <laughs> um, no. But seriously, Dr. Stockton, uh, you, you, you're truly one of the greatest leaders that I, I've been blessed um, to meet. And um, your integrity is above reproach. I, I really, I sincerely mean that. Uh, I've watched Dr. Stockton very closely over the last six years, observing his kind of rock star status um, throughout the district, uh, that the district at large attributes to Don. And uh, I'll just say, I'm, I'm, I'm proud to say that um, I've actually bought the T-shirt. And I wear the crowd. So, so, so great job, Dr. Stockton. With that being said, allow me to uh, attempt to avoid the appearance of being overly, an overly excited cheerleader uh, relative to uh, Dr. Dr. Noel here. Um, I firmly believe that Dr. Noel has been an instrumental part of the exceptional success of CISD. And I have absolute confidence that uh, he will continue that success under, CISD will continue to uh, have that success under Dr. Noel's leadership. Um, I've made many difficult, very difficult decisions over the past six years sitting on this board. Um, but I'll say the decision to recommend Dr. Knoll as Dr. Stockton's successor uh, has been by far one of the easiest. Um, and I've taken that decision very seriously. So uh, I thank you for making that decision easy for us. Uh, but in closing, I'll keep it short and sweet. Outside of Dr. Knoll um, not being able to cite the Powell Pledge uh, <laughs> on the spot, uh, I have no reservation that uh, he, he indeed, um, CISD indeed, is in very extremely capable hands, and uh, this transition will go extremely smoothly. Thereby, despite Dr. Stockton's uh, uh, departure, it is truly still a great day to be in CISD. So congratulations. Go ahead. That's all. Um, well... You know, I, I grew up in Conroe, I've been here for years, and uh, I really believe uh, in God's timing and that Don Stockton came to our district in the right time. And uh, he has really just made a huge impact on just all of us and all the community. And everybody I've talked to, I've said there's nobody that works harder than Don Stockton. He's 24-7, 365 days a year, and we all admire him greatly, and he's done such a fantastic job. Um, I met an educator six or seven years ago, I guess it was, uh, that I had not, never seen somebody like this love kids and just care so much and just, you could just see that in the way that he interacted with kids and uh, actually that was your father. <laughs> no. and, I didn't know Curtis at the time. But I, <laughs> I want to recognize you guys as, as parents because, you know, the legacy that you bring uh, and that you as educator and the way you've loved on kids and, and you know, it's been a, an honor 
Curtis and uh, to get to know you and, and I see that genuine love that sincerity just of not just the kids but everybody that you work with and everybody that you're around and you know when you see somebody that has that family legacy and just like your own kids and what they're turned out to be you know that translates um, into just a great leader for our district and for all of our students and, and for all of us and we look forward to the the next years with you and your family and, and the legacy that you're building along with Don. So thank you. Well, <laughs> it's, it's all been said before, but I can tell you that uh, Don and I have had many conversations and I look out at this audience and it's full of people that we have had discussions about prior to them having their current jobs. And uh, I don't know if Don wanted you to know that or not, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let me just say, you know, oh, Don, I think that's a great pick for such such elementary or whatever, okay? And moving principles around. And so we've had that talk, those talks for, I don't know, is it 12, 15, 14 years, whatever it is. Ten years ago, he could say, watch this one, okay? <laughs> and, and I went, from Magnolia? <laughs> uh, you know, okay, you know, whatever, okay. But it truly has been, uh, he saw it. Okay, I give him the vision, uh, just like he has had the right vision in so many cases. Uh, as I said, I'm staring at them. Okay, but uh, he had the right vision. He saw it early. He brought m me along. I mean, you know, I, I saw it. And then let me just say from a more personal note, I, I know your family and you know mine. And it does take a village and you were part of my village. And I will forever be gra grateful for that. And I mean that, uh, especially with a young one, okay? <laughs> I, I was tired. I needed help. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, but truly, uh, to con carry on the consistency and the integrity of this school district, which in my opinion has no match in the, in the state of Texas or anywhere else, and nor does it superintend it, and nor will it superintend it. And I don't know how better to say that put you in a lofty crowd. So uh, congratulations to you, sir. I love you to death. I love your family, and I wish you the very best. I've had the unique privilege of, of getting to know Dr. Knoll on a personal level and a professional <clears throat> level and, and watching his career as a parent and as a member of the community. Um, it's amazing whenever you talk to his former students, they still quote him and they still tell you things that they learned from Dr. Knoll. Uh, when we speak to uh, the principals and the administrators and the teachers uh, that Dr. Knoll has, has mentored over the years, uh, they still off the top of their head quote things that they learned and that they heard him say. Um, and every time I get a chance to speak in community, um, I share a quote that I learned from Dr. Knoll when he was principal of Conroe High School, um, inviting community members in. Um, and, and speaking about his philosophy on education and on a strong school and a strong district. Um, and seeing how you have raised your own family and knowing that's the same values that you instill in your students, uh, seeing the relationships that you have with your family and knowing that that's the same bond that you have with your, uh, with your educators. Um, we, we've talked a lot about how, how Dr. Stockton is leaving uh, a, a large, uh, large shoe to be filled um, but we have every confidence um, in, in the future of this district. This is the best district in the state of Texas, and um, I, I haven't had a greater honor as a school board member than to be able to make that motion to recommend what I believe is going to be the, the next greatest superintendent in the state of Texas. Dr. Stockton. <laughs> well, as I look around the room and I hear the comments of the board members, it's hit me that um, I can't change my mind. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. <laughs> uh, no, I'm proud of you, Curtis. Oh, very proud. I will save my remarks for after uh, we vote and Dr. Knoll speaks. So I thought we just did. <laughs> uh, motion and a second. And we have a motion and a second on the floor. All those in favor? Congratulations, Dr. Knoll. Wow. 
had a cold and allergies, so I'm sure that's what you might hear. Um, if you hear any sniffling, I'm sure that's what it is. I don't believe so. Yeah. Um, first of all, let me say thank you to, to each of you and to all of you collectively. Um, this uh, is quite an honor. Uh, it means so much to me to be able to uh, assume this role in the district that I first began my teaching career. And that's special. And, and uh, it's also very special for us as a district that we don't, we don't do this very often in Conroe ISD. Mm -hmm. you know, to have a man that, that has sat in the seat for 15 years um, speaks very highly of our community, speaks very highly of our board, um, and it speaks very highly of the man in the seat. And so I thank you for that honor. And it is an honor to follow Dr. Stockton. And um, you know, I, I've kidded Dr. Stockton um, over the last few months that, that uh, you know, we've been on a little bit of a victory tour. Every meeting that we go to, somebody recognizes him. And, and, uh, <laughs> but the, the truth is we could do it every day and it won't be enough. Um, the job that he has done here, and without the job that you had done, this wouldn't be possible. We wouldn't have an internal candidate to be superintendent unless you did a fantastic job. And, and I can't personally thank you enough for your mentorship. Um, as a first year teacher, I would tell you that when Dr. Stockton was my superintendent, my first two years as I taught, I watched every single thing he did, you know, how he interacted with people. And then that didn't change from every position that I had. I, I've, I know that I've asked Dr. Stockton at least a million questions and he's answered every one. Always answers the phone when I call him early in the morning with questions and I've done that for probably 10 years. And so um, just want to thank you for, for the job that you've done. And, and Kara, his wife is here as well, and it's a family commitment. And so um, before I really start into my remarks, I want to just take a moment for all of us to thank Dr. Stockton and Kara for the day. <laughs> this is a really big night for us, and, and it's not Personally, this means a lot to me, but it's a big night for our school district because for our board to have the confidence to hire an internal candidate tells everyone in this room that they know the great job that you're doing. They know the, the impact that you're having on children every day. And, and I wouldn't be here without the great job that you do. And although I didn't go to school in Conroe ISD, I'm a product of Conroe ISD. <laughs> I showed up as a rookie teacher and didn't know one way from another. And all along the way, people taught me how to be a good teacher. And then I became a rookie assistant principal, and I had no idea what I was doing. And great teachers and, and administrators taught me how to become an assistant principal. And then I became a principal in Conroe ISD. And I surely didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> Luckily, I had a librarian that would tell me exactly <laughs> what I was supposed to do. Uh, and, and then, and then moving into this building, you know, every, every step along the way, there have been people there to invest in me, to help me grow, to help me learn. And I look out and I just see all your faces. Um, and that's special. You know, it's a, it is a testament to the gifted educators in, in our district that, that, that you could help grow me and, and put me in a position to be here today. And, you know, I, I've heard that phrase, big shoes to fill a couple times. <laughs> I think I'll hear it a few more, probably. <laughs> and it's true. Uh, th there, are, there are huge shoes to fill for me personally. But we all have big shoes to fill. It's not just me. It's all of us. You know, I look around this room. I see Kathy Clark in the room. I'm going to have a school named after her. You know, I see Linda Sasser, former board member in the, in the building. Ms. Drummond. I see great educators that made Connor ISD what it is today. And all of us walk into buildings where those great educators have worked and taught and cared for children. And so we all have big shoes to fill. In addition to that, you think about some of those little feet right now that are going to fill big shoes one day. You know, every day that we go to school, we're filling shoes. We're filling shoes of future architects and nurses and doctors and lawyers as we invest in those children. So. I have big shoes, but we all do. And, and people have said, oh, you know, are you nervous about that? And I would be if I didn't have such a great team. You know, for any of us to try to do this alone would, would be impossible. The, the task is too large, but we don't have to do it alone. 
you know, to Dr. Stockton's credit, we've built such a great team in Conroe ISD. And, and it's in all facets. You know, you look around and you see here tonight, you see representatives from technology and maintenance and custodial. You see, you know, transportation, finance, all the people that work in this building that are kind of behind the scenes to make sure that everything goes great on our campuses. And we all understand that. The most important thing that happens in this school district happens in a classroom every day with a teacher and the children in that classroom. And what makes this place special is that all of us that don't get that opportunity every day understand that. And we invest in that because that's really where the magic happens. This is a, a unique place. And, you know, we've grown. We're, we're not little Conroe anymore, <laughs> you know? 61,000 students, over 61,000 students, over 7,000 employees. And yet, I say team, but the reality is it's a family. You can look around this room and you feel that tonight. You know, other school districts, this is not the feeling that happens in the border. This is a special place. And the reason for that is what we've built here is built on love. You know, we love this school district. We love our jobs. We love the opportunity that we have to be here every day. We love each other. You know, and it's that love for each other that allows us to push each other to get better every day. It allows us to trust in that PLC. Right? It's also that love that has 70 people show up at your house when your house floods in Harvey to, to show up to help you clean up. Or it's that love that brings dinner to your house every night when you have a family tragedy because you're surrounded by love. And that love goes deeper than just our employees. It goes to the, to the children. And that's the most important place. To love the kids. Every day. And not only, and when you love them, this is what's important. When you love them, nothing will stop you from helping them be successful. There's not a mandate. There's not a test. There's nothing in the world that will stop you from making sure someone you love reaches their fullest potential. And we do that every day. We see that every day with our special and gifted teachers and, and campus staff in Conroe ISD. And in addition to just loving the children, we teach them how to love. We teach them to love learning. And more and more today than any other time, we have to teach them how to love each other. We have to teach them how to love themselves and know that they're okay. Because in the end, that's what we all want. We all want to be surrounded by people that challenge us to be better people than who we are, to grow every day. And everyone in this room, as, as Dr. Stockton mentioned and, and Mr. Husband mentioned, you look around this room, this room is full of special people. But you didn't get there alone either. You know, tonight my biggest gift is that I get an opportunity to tell the people that made a huge difference in my life, thank you. That gift doesn't have to be reserved for me today. I want you to think right now, every one of you, who's made a difference in your life? Who's been that special person that's gotten you where you are today? Just take a minute to think about that. Who's done it? It might be a parent, might be a student that you had, maybe a coworker. But think about that person. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna challenge you today. And principals, I'm gonna hold you accountable in the morning when you come in. <laughs> I'm gonna ask if you did it. Take an opportunity tonight to tell that person thank you. Whoever it is that you thought of. Maybe it's a text, maybe it's a phone call, maybe it's a, maybe it's a prayer. To say thank you to the person or people that have allowed you to be who you are today and make the difference that you make. And, and like I said, I'm fortunate to get that opportunity and I'm, I'm gonna take a chance here to introduce some people that are special to me um, tonight. Uh, I wanna start by introducing um, you know, when you're a kid, you're growing up, it's all about who you surround yourself with, right? We've all had that same talk with kids hundreds of times, right? <laughs> and, and I was real fortunate to grow up in a place that, that there were great kids in my school, and, and, um, and I was smart enough to pick uh, a best friend that made me want to be better, and a family that could be like a second home to me and help me be good. So uh, I want to thank Leonard Gutierrez is, was my best man at my wedding, my friend since first grade. <laughs> I 
and his dad, his dad Johnny, is here as well. And like I said, that's a, that's a very special people to me. I started dating my wife when we were 16 years old. So when you look back, it's a, it's a long time uh, to get to have a second set of parental influences in your life. And I want to thank my in-laws for being here today. Don and Margie Burks are here as well, so thank you. And uh, as Scott Kidd mentioned, you know, uh, before I was ever born, I won the parent lottery. And uh, it was not only did I, was I taught how to be a good man, I was taught how to be a good educator. And it wasn't because what they told me, it was because what I watched them do. Watch the difference that was made in people's lives. So Mike and Linda and all, my parents are here. And then, and then my crew at the house. You know, we've, uh, there's been a lot of missed dinners, a lot of interrupted dinners over the years, and a lot of time spent at schools or uh, in this building. And I know that um, we've tried to make the most of the times that we've had together. <laughs> Should have never looked at y'all. <laughs> <laughs> um, but my, my two kids, both at Conroe High, Travis and Kaylee. Stand up. And my wife, who is a pre-K teacher at B.B. Rice here in Conroe ISD, Tanya. <laughs> so I'm going to kind of wrap this up, but today is special. And it's not special because we're naming the lone finalists for superintendent. Today is special because every day in education is special. You know, this job is great. Being an educator is a great job because it matters so much. It's a super difficult job because it matters so much every single day. And that makes it hard. We couldn't do it alone. Wouldn't want to do it alone. Wouldn't want to do it with any other team than the team that we have here. So I look forward to spending many more years with you working to be a bright light in the lives of our students, our staff, in our community. So thank you. Thank you. I'm going this way. Dr. Noll, on uh, behalf of the board, I would like to say congratulations. Uh, we in CISD have been blessed for 15 years to have Dr. Stockton leading this district, and that's been echoed by everyone up here. And he has taken this district from one very few knew of and one mired in controversy at the time that he was appointed <laughs> to, <laughs> to one of the most well-known and recognized districts in the state. Many people have said since Stockton's announcement that whoever takes his place has big shoes to fill, as we've even said. But my comment to you is the same that I told you the other day. You only need to fill one set of shoes assuming this role, and those are yours. You have proven yourself in this district for many years, and you are the best choice to lead this district for many years to come. As a parent, as a taxpayer and as a part of this board, thank you for choosing to be in CISD. I'm gonna take a brief two minute recess for those of you that I know wanna file out into the hallway so that you can congratulate him personally. And then we're gonna go ahead with the rest of our agenda. <laughs>
Alright. I'm sorry. It's been a long two minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and get on with this. <laughs> Item five is the consent agenda. Do I have I have heard no request to remove anything. Motion to approve. I have a motion to Second. approve. Second. Second. Our motion. Uh, All those in favor uh, for approval of the consent agenda. You got it, Ms. Carter? All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you ma'am. Item 7A, consider 2018-2019 Texas Education Agency Homeless Children and Youth Grant. Dr. Stockton. All right, Dr. Hines, if you'll come present that item, please. Let me say grant. Good evening, President Bush, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. Uh, tonight, I'm uh, coming forward to ask your permission to apply for uh, a Texas Education 2018-2019 uh, Texas Education for Homeless Children and Youth grant. Uh, this would be, if, if we're allowed to apply and if we were approved, this is a competitive grant uh, that would, would uh, we're eligible for up to $35,625 for up to three years. That number may change because we've seen a big increase in the number of homeless students displaced uh, due to Harvey. We have, uh, last time I looked, we had 21 students that were displaced from other storms and over uh, 665, I think, around that number that were displaced due to Harvey. So uh, currently we have 900 and um, I think our latest count was 945 students that were designated as homeless. And so we've seen a big increase. We may even see an increase in this grant later on, but if, if allowed to apply and if we're approved, uh, this grant would fund 42% of a new position to support our homeless students uh, and help connect with services. Um, we would fund locally the other 42% and 16% would come from Title I funds that are already being used for that. Um, and then the balance of that money would also go into funding uh, maybe a computer and mileage for this position so they had, they, we assume they would do some travel. So we're asking permission tonight to apply uh, for this grant. Okay. So Do motion. Second. Second. Any discussion? Questions? Question. You were explaining what exactly this grant cover. I, I didn't really get that. What it's so our our plan at this point would be to fund uh, a portion of a position to serve as a homeless liaison, so that would work with students that are classified as homeless. We currently have uh, Linda Gowan is in that position, and but she also wears multiple hats, and we've seen an increase in. Uh, and, and part of and give you an idea of what Linda would do is she helped arrange uh, transportation when our students needed to get uh, arrangements for transportation or made visits um, to, to talk to families and, and try to help connect them with agencies or support. Um, so it's a lot of legwork sometimes or helping a school, you know, maybe questions about registration, okay. those kinds of things. Um, other, you've been here for a while, so other than Harvey, type years what is the average we've had as homeless so, so the grant was based on our last year number of 475 students so we've seen a steady increase over the years we've grown as a district so we've also grown in the number of students that annually qualify as homeless can i can i pick it back off of that question you know sure. uh, Ms. Kidd, what, what exactly are we meaning qualifying as home, uh, homeless i need to so there's a <clears throat> I, I, I know it should be self-explanatory no but no that, that's it, it, right. 400, 400 <laughs> kind of throws me off that seems pretty high so um and, and i think part of it is is maybe what we think of as homeless but students um could be um in transition of housing could qualify so there's a pretty broad definition under the federal guidelines of what homeless is and so uh, but a family could have lost their home and moved in with another family, okay. moved in gotcha. with gotcha. extended family. All right. That scared and me still a little qualify. bit there. A Any ballpark just estimates on like high school kids versus elementary, that type of? I, I do not have that information with me. <laughs> Mr. Hubert. A couple quick, quick questions. Sure. I wrote down 42 new positions. So the grant would supply 42 new positions along with no, 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 no. 42 percent of one 42 percent of one position employee let me clean that out real quick. <laughs> all right that's much better okay so okay that answers all of my questions <laughs> i'm glad i can straighten that out i i have one more question then yes sir so 42 percent of the salary of a position 
is that position budgeted for in the event we don't get the grant? Uh, at this point, the, the balance is not, no, sir. Okay. But is that being considered in the event? Absolutely. Okay. Yes, we're always looking at backup plans. Mr. Moore. Does the inclusion of Title I funds in this position, would that preclude that person from servicing a student that is not in a Title I school? Not, it, it, they, they would have to make sure they're, no, because everybody who's uh, homeless under the McKinney-Vento Act qualifies for Title I. Thank you. Okay. Good questions, guys. Any other questions? I just have a comment. It's just, uh, it's heartbreaking that we have students that have to worry about it a place to lay their head at night mm -hmm. and then worry about going to school and I just appreciate our school district taking the effort that it does to try and uh, as best we can help those students find transitional housing or other needs this is a growing concern not just for Conroe ISD but for Montgomery County and a lot of people really don't understand that there are a lot of homeless kids out there and we need to try to help them every way we can so I appreciate the effort all those in favor? Thank you. <clears throat> Item 8A, receive information on the selection of campus mascot and school colors for Katherine Johnson Clark Intermediate School. Dr. Stockton. I will ask Dr. Phillips to come up and present our very cute mascot. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Stockton, President Bush, members of the board. We are really excited about the future opening of Katherine Johnson Clark Intermediate. As a matter of fact, we have our namesake here yes, tonight. Yes, we do. Hey. Hey. Right. So we're now to the point where it's time to start thinking about the colors and the mascot. Lindsay Arduan, our principal, sent out a survey to our future Clark students. And she received, Lindsay's here tonight too, right? Yes. Lindsay's here tonight also. We received about 300 responses, so kids were very excited to participate in this. Uh, half of the votes came from Bradley, Burnham Woods, and Snyder fourth graders, and then the other 150 votes came from Cox students. So tonight we want to present to you the direction that, that we're headed. Uh, tonight is for informational purposes only. We'll be bringing this back to you next month for, a final, for your final approval. <laughs> so let me introduce to you our Clark Cub. Aww. Cute. <laughs> the, um, orange is not the favorite color of Kathy Clark, so we're sherbet and blue. So <laughs> orange. <laughs> so um, anyway, you'll notice the colors are orange and blue, which aligns with our um, gr uh, Grand, Grand Oaks bear. feeder. And we thought the cubs fit in nicely. We have the Bradley Bears. Yeah. Now we have the adolescent cub, Clark <laughs> cub, and then they'll grow up to be the mighty Grizzlies. So um, we're excited about it. And uh, if you decide to go that way, we'll be voting next month on this so right. any questions or feedback thank you very much yeah. dr phillips good stuff item 8b consider approval of the guaranteed maximum price amendment for district-wide safety and security phase. upgrades project phase three dr stockton okay, mr foster will you present that item please Good evening, President Bush, members of the board, and Dr. Stockman. It's my pleasure to bring forward for your consideration and approval a guaranteed maximum price amendment for our district-wide safety and security upgrades project, phase three. <clears throat> if you recall, on March 22nd of 2016, we selected Ellisor Constructors to be our construction manager at risk for our district-wide safety and securities upgrade project. The project was to be designed in phases over time so that we could improve our processes as we move along. This is phase three of this work. For our 2015 bond referendum, this will be the final phase of this project. At the completion of this project, we will have touched in some way every campus in the district and upgraded their, their uh, systems uh, to help make our, make our campuses feel safer, act safer, and give our staff and students a better chance to, uh, to uh, be safe in their environments. At this time, we've negotiated a guaranteed maximum price for phase three of $3,715,314. At this time, we request your approval. Do I have a motion? So move. Second. All right. Any discussion? Questions for Mr. Foster? I have, I have one, Mr. Foster. Can you kind of give me, I, I can't recall in board docs, uh, kind of an overview of the third phase again, the security, is it? 
Well, uh, I mean, <laughs> generally speaking, so at our elementary and intermediate schools, we've we've com or we will with this project complete the secure vestibule entries. Okay. So that we have controlled access into the vestibule, and yes. then again controlled access into the reception areas. Okay. So that we can give a multi-layered approach to help help oh. give us some time in the event there is an issue. Right. We've also been around and helped with access control on some of the other exterior doors to make it easier to get in and out for our staff that have access to the building. Mm -hmm. and we've also been around and upgraded our camera views uh, so that we've, um, we can monitor traffic through the building should become necessary. Uh, we've done that in elementary, intermediates, most of the junior highs, and, and we've touched this project and our other capital improvements because we try to make efficient use of our time when we're on a job with another project. We'll have done this at most every campus in the district at some level. Okay, thank you. All right. Motion and a second, and now approval. All those in favor? Thank you, Mr. Foster. <coughs> Item 8C received capital improvements update. Mr. Foster. At this time, I'd like to bring you up to speed on our capital improvements we have underway throughout the district. <coughs> Start with Grand Oaks High School. Grand Oaks is scheduled to open in August of 2018, so it is on schedule. You can see from the picture here, it's really starting to take life on the site. Uh, colors abound, so you can see the ball fields and all the athletic venues taking shape. On the exterior of the building, we're focused on the front and back doors now. I mean, so the building is largely closed in uh, and under conditioned, as it is a conditioned environment at this point. On the inside of the building, you can see the classrooms are beginning to come together. Uh, we're working with our purchasing department to start receiving our furniture and fixtures for the classroom sections of the building beginning in April. I mean, so we're starting out at the building so it'll be suitable for our use uh, as we move in this summer. You can see through the common spaces, things are starting to clean up and take their shape and become more finished as we move closer to the uh, summer break. And then as you can see here, our gym floors, things of that nature are all, are all taking shape nicely. Moving on to Katherine Johnson Clark Intermediate School. It is also scheduled to open in August of 2018. And much like Grand Oaks, the focus on the exterior of the building is now at the front doors. As you can see here, the picture of the entryway work starting, uh, but the masonry work around the building is basically done up to this point. Inside the building, again, just like Grand Oaks, you're starting to see the finishes come together and see the things come along uh, very nicely. Like I said, the project is on schedule and scheduled to open in August of 2018. Our life cycle 2018 project, which is where we made a lot of headway with the spring break time period. We had some good weather and we made good use of it. This is a picture of the gym floor that got replaced at Oak Ridge Elementary. In addition to Oak Ridge Elementary, we did a gym floor at Haley Elementary. Uh, we completed a roof for our north maintenance facility. Uh, we started re-roofing one section of the building at Travis Intermediate. Started re-roofing the building at uh, Textbook Warehouse or Testing and Assessment Center. Started working on the uh, digital controls for the air conditioning system upgrades at the police command center. We also started working on the completion of the build out of the final classrooms at Stewart Elementary over the break. As we move into uh, the end of uh, the school year, we'll start working on the other parts of that program. And we'll be able to tell you about the uh, work that's going on from the auditorium and stadiums uh, as we enter the summer break. Our stadium school board replacement project, I don't have a picture of it to show you yet because we haven't physically started the work, but we've been working for the last couple of months with Dactronics, getting the design and the approval and the fabrication drawings ready. It is all ready and set so that work will start in earnest on the football stadium scoreboards as soon as soccer season ends. So when we come back to the next board meeting, we should have something to show you on the, on the big screens. Flex 19, which was recently approved, uh, is we've been working through the jurisdictions. We've got two mud districts that are coming together basically at our property line. So we've been working with both those jurisdictions, trying to work out drainage issues so we can get our stormwater clear of our site. Uh, they're mobilizing on that site this week, so next month we should have something to show you on that one as well. At Austin Elementary, which is an addition renovation project, where we're reorganizing that site to give more of our, our vehicle traffic off the, off the highway so we can make that a safer location uh, and a more uh, long-term uh, sustainable building. Uh, that project is started in uh, very well. So we've been clearing clearing the pathways to allow us for staging and, and all the other things that are required to do the construction on that site uh, while that campus is occupied. So the, this is a picture of the preparation work just off-site 
so that we'll be ready to work on site and show you some good pictures of that over the coming coming months. At Irons Junior High, we're adding 10 classrooms. Uh, good, good weather over the spring break uh, gave us uh, a great platform to begin that work and get it started off on a good note. That project is on schedule, although it just started. And we're scheduled to turn over for use, our use of those classrooms for students uh, during the winter break of 2018. Our new junior high school, which is also recently approved, we've been working with the city. The city of Conroe is our jurisdiction there. We're nearing the end of their, uh, their permitting requirements, so we'll be mobilizing on that site, and we have some pretty pictures to show you over the next couple of weeks. Conroe High School, which is an addition and renovation project. The addition is set up so that we can renovate the main building campus. The building addition, we use the good weather over the spring break time period to get a lot of the lightweight insulated roof concrete done, which takes a lot of equipment and a lot of space off around the building. So that, that process went well. That project for the new addition is on schedule. You can see the interior of that, that building is coming together nicely as well. The plan is to turn those classrooms over for our use at, over the winter break of 2018, and then we'll really get involved in the renovation of the main campus at that point. That project is on schedule, and we're scheduled to be on that campus until 20, the end of 2019. That's our update. Thank you, Mr. Foster. Item 9A, consider award of RFP 17-01-01A, Contracted Educational Services, <coughs> Professional Development, and Educational Consulting Services, Dr. Stockton. That's a long title for that item. It uh, is, it and is. it's not that big this month. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Rice, if you'll present that item, please. Thank you. Good evening, President Bush, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. It is my pleasure to recommend the Board of Trustees award RFP 17-01-01A, Contracted Educational Services, Professional Development, and Educational Consultant Services, March of 2018, to the 21 vendors listed on the attached tabulation for an estimated annual expenditure of approximately $12,000. Uh, thus far, 223 out of an estimated 350 vendors have been awarded since June of 2017. The vendors proposed submitted responses between February 1st, 2018 and February 28th, 2018. Service contracts with awarded vendors will remain firm through March 31st, 2019, with an option to renew annually for four additional one-year terms through March 31st, 2023. And at this time, I recommend your approval. I move we approve. Second. All those, any discussion? All those in favor? <laughs> All right, item 9B, consider transfer of general fund, an assigned fund balance to the capital projects fund. Yes, tonight I'm recommending the Board of Trustees approve the attached resolution authorizing the transfer of $8.2 million of general fund, unassigned fund balance to the capital projects funds. The fund balance transfer is required to fund the capital projects funds for the classroom additions at Irons Junior High, that's approximately $5 million, and school board replacements at Moorhead Stadium, Woodforce Bank Stadium, and the Natatorium of about $3.2 million. Uh, just want to remind you that the funding for the school boards through our advertising sales will be replaced over the next several years. Uh, at this time, I recommend your approval. So moved. Second. All right. Any discussion? I'm not sure I understand. <laughs> the, <laughs> no offense, Mr. Williams, but perfect timing. <laughs> that was serious. It had nothing to do with me. <laughs> All those in favor. All right. And our last item tonight, item 9C, receive financial reports. Mr. Rice here this evening to present the financial statements for the district for the month of February. Uh, these statements will include the general fund, debt service, child nutrition, and self-funded insurance. Uh, the first statement we'll look at this evening is our balance sheet. Our balance sheet <coughs> shows our assets, our liabilities, and our fund balances. Each month we like to take a look at our cash and investments. And once again, concentrating here on the general fund, we show that we have cash on hand of $500. We have bank deposits of $2 million. We have investments in our state pools of $243.5 million. We have our short-term investments of $74.3 million. We have our longer-term investments with TCG Investment Advisors of $51.9 million for total cash and investments in the general fund of $371.8 million. Uh, time to take a look at our property tax collections. Uh, 
we're ahead of where we were last year, so that, so that is good. Um, we did receive information from the appraisal district on the Hurricane Harvey reappraisal. Mm -hmm. uh, that's going to uh, be about $72 million on our levy, which will, as we anticipated, about $800,000 uh, of levy revenue for the district. That <coughs> the, This is the one time that the state funding formula will repay us next year for that money. So. next statement we'll look at is the income statement. The income statement includes our revenues and expenditures. Our revenues are broken down into three categories. They include our local and intermediate sources, state program revenues, and federal program revenues. Looking at the detail of our local and intermediate sources, uh, in the general fund and debt service fund, you can see property taxes is the largest generator of revenues. And in food sales for food service and premium contributions and self-funded insurance. We can also take a look at our year-to-date expenditures by major category. It's payroll in the general fund. Debt service, you can see we did make a debt service payment on, on February 15th. In uh, child nutrition, it's supplies and materials, and it's contracted services and self-funded insurance. Taking a look at our projected fund balance, so we're projecting our general fund fund balance to increase to about, about $10 million this year. Uh, the change from last month is we, with Hurricane Harvey, I don't want to say it's a Plus, but one of the things that, that the Department of Agriculture did is every student in CISD for the month of September was on the free and reduced plan. With that, it increased our comp ed funding by about $7 million. So that is reflected in this. Uh, so, so if there is a plus to it, this helps the district. <clears throat> uh, no change in the pro projection for child nutrition, still $800,000. This is our 200, uh, 2015 bond referendum status update. We've currently expended and encumbered $419.8 million. We have an estimate complete of about $97.5 million, leaving us with a total project forecast of $517.3 million. Uh, great report here on self-funded insurance. Had another good month in, in February. Overall, our total revenues are roughly $24 million. Our expenses, $20.3 million, leaving us revenues over expenses of $3.7 million. And uh, participation in our wellness centers, y'all can see that. As our, you know, we're very happy that as our employees are seeking health care, they are choosing our clinic as their provider, and we're very happy to see that. Our investments for the month, par value of our total portfolio was $692 million. Our pools are yielding 1.58%. Our shorter term investments that are investments that are less than a year are 1.74%. Our longer term investments with TCG Investment Advisors is 1.38%, leaving our combined portfolio with a WAM of 52 days, yielding 1.59%. And our benchmark, the 90 day T bill, is right at 1.59%. So we're right on target. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rice. Do I have a motion to adjourn? If, before we adjourn, oh. I was going to make a, one quick statement. If it's if it's appropriate, I'm going to ask for, um, for Dr. Stockton to make sure it, if I could say something about the Lone Star Clinic in the East County. Sure, uh, sure that's not an item. That, it's not an item. Information. I just want to say I went to the open house. They had the open house the other day, and their their board was very very appreciative of the the relationship that we built with them. And they could already see that I think they were only open for three or four days mm -hmm. and they could already see that the community was utilizing that that spot location and they're already even looking forward to um, expanding that that facility mm -hmm. to even more square foot. So on behalf of them, I want to let the rest of the board know how appreciative they were and how much of an impact that's making on that community. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Motion to adjourn. So moved. All right. We are adjourned. 740.